We're going to continue our discussion of proteins. And so as we know, uh, proteins are the main workhorses of the cell. So if we think of proteins, if we think of sort of a Venn diagram of proteins where this is the entire subset of proteins, then we also have, for instance, enzymes in here, right? And these are catalytic in nature, so these are uh, involved in forming and breaking of bonds of other molecules uh, within the cell. And we have also a bunch of other proteins that are involved in various functions uh, that are important for the cell. So what we're moving on now from uh, talking about uh, the primary structure of polypeptides and proteins to going to what we're, where we actually think about uh, correlating the 3D structure of proteins with their function. And so these are, the structure is very important uh, depending on the function of the protein, right? So it dictates the function of the protein, in other words. So here are a few examples. These are uh, by no means the ex an exhaustive list of uh, different functions of proteins uh, inside of the cell. Uh, but this first one is called collagen, and so this forms a fibrous-like structure, all right, almost like, uh, you know, a fiber in uh, a fabric or something. And so as we know, fabric, for instance, are very, um, are very strong. And so collagen is a structural protein, and it also provides some elasticity. And so we'll look at, at this uh, a little bit later um, in the class about how this is able to confer both of those types of properties. But you can think of, just looking at the fibrous-like structure of this, that this could be a very strong and structural protein. And then we have proteins, for instance, that can bind uh, small molecules such as oxygen. So the structure here on the right is hemoglobin, and this is involved in O2 uh, transport in the blood. And so this is really famous. Obviously, that would, that's what imparts the red color of the blood as from the uh, heme uh, molecules that are inside the hemoglobin. And we'll talk more about this um, in the next chapter. So another thing that uh, proteins might do or have some sort of enzymatic activity, and this, a lot of the proteins actually are enzymes. And so they're able to uh, catalyze different reactions. So one famous one, for instance, is the cytochrome C oxidase. And so this is able to catalyze the reduction of oxygen by four electrons to water. This is the last step, for instance, uh, in respiration. And this is, this, the structure of this is very interesting. So first of all, this is a very large uh, protein um, and actually is comprised of several polypeptides. And we'll discuss more about um, sort of the quaternary structure. Um, that's involved in some proteins that this requires, okay? And so what's interesting, what's shown here is on the green, on the flanking regions of this protein. So the protein, there's a lot of um, sort of, uh, I guess, curled structures. And uh, these are called alpha helices, which we'll discuss more soon. And then on the left and the right side, flanking regions of this uh, are these green, uh, or these uh, sort of windy, uh, green structures, and that's actually a lipid membrane. So this is an intermembrane protein. And so the structure of the protein has to be able to accommodate, first of all, uh, that it's not a soluble protein, but instead it's inside the lipid membrane. And it also has to do the function of reduction of oxygen to water. And it also is important, if uh, you recall from um, previous biology classes, that it acts as a proton, um, as a proton pump. And so it can display, it can move, elect, or excuse me, move protons from one side of the membrane to the other. So all of these functions are accommodated by the special structure of this uh, enzyme. And the, the overall point is that the structure, the three-dimensional structure of a protein dictates its function. And we'll be looking at that more and more uh, as we go through the next, uh, as we go through the entire semester.